Hi everyone, welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and build update number two of Revell's 1957 Cadillac Eldorado Brome. We got a lot done since the last update and I learned a few things, so stick around on this one because I got a ton to cover. Let's move Mr. and Mrs. Eldorado out the way and we'll start off with the body. And you can see I got a lot of body work done on this bad boy. Um, there were sink marks everywhere, but not to fear. Um, Tammy's white putty was here and the dog is really happy about it as you can hear too. <laughs> but the other thing I wanna show you is after flexing, sanding, filing, um, and working out, heating, cooling, and just being patient with this thing. I got this kit. Let me pull the rubber bands off here. I was able to get this kit to dang near drop together. I do need my visor for this, so we will put it together right here. I'll show you. Start off with these two tabs in the back. And... Look at that. Now I'll be able to do that just like that. I've done it about 12 times now. And I'll be able to do that just like that with, with the glue on. So I'm gonna put my rubber band clamps on. I take them, fold them on my finger, and I'll drop one on the front, one on the back. And see there, that holds this together pretty darn good. Um, I will have to hold squeeze right here where this thin part is. When I glue it, I'll do one side, then I'll do the other side, because I'll be able to get the glue in here. And I'm saying that because I learned something today, just messing around. I had this all put together with the interior in, and I picked it up, and the interior kind of hinged a little bit. And I was like, Hmm. So I spent a few minutes and I taped my interior all together. Now I do know that, you know, so don't go, hey, 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 wait, wait, wait. I know this has to go on. This is the cover for the, for the dash. This will sit on here just like this and look pretty. And it does. But let me show you something. And I'm, I know this kit's out, um, like a repop, I forget who is putting it out, but I know a lot of people told me they were shy of grabbing this kit because of this ship uh, ship model type assembly where you put the two uh, hull halves together this way. Um, most of the ships don't have an opening here where you can get the glue in like this, but I can take this glued up because I mean, I'm, I'm taped pretty good and I was able to figure out that I could take it and slide it in, put it in here. Now there's two locator marks and we have company over the wife's with, the, with them and the dog is just looking for attention. But anyhow, watch this. I can take this and I will flex it just a little bit and I'm on the locator pins, look at that drop down with the frame together. It didn't separate, it didn't lift, it didn't twist or anything. And it is where it's supposed to be. I have these wing gaps here. I don't care about that. You know why? Because once this is in, I can bring this and I can take a little clamp. And when I say a little clamp, I'm talking my uh, dollar store clothes pins and just put that in here. And that'll hold that tight. I will let the one side dry. I'll put like three or four of them. I, I got smaller ones. Uh -huh. But I'll put like three or four of them together to lock that in place. Now I use the big ones. I'm out of line here a little bit. There we go. To lock that in place, or I can even hold it with my finger while the super glue dries. And then I'll come over here where this side has the gaposis, and I'll do the same thing. And look at how that pulls in there to where there's, I mean, it's a perfect lineup. Just right. So we'll take the front seat 
and we're going to take it and put it in an angle this way and just rotate it into place and it drops right in there on that um, locator pins on the both sides so I can put a gob of glue on both sides. Nobody's going to see it underneath the seat, so who cares? Load it up. We'll come in with the back seat, and this one will be a little more finicky because i got to bring it in and around. How about if I make sure I'm putting the bottom in first? And I am. See these two holes right here? This bottom's got to line in. So I'm going to bring it in here, and I'm going to force it underneath, which means no bare metal foil because I'll just shred it. So I'll have to do Molotov pen in future. But look at that. We are in place. So now i got a gob of glue holding this seat, a gob of glue holding that seat. Now you're saying, but Mark, what the heck? Well, watch this. This piece can slide in and kind of flex around a little bit with your finger. And ta-da. So now I got the whole interior in with the body on. Everything's ready to go and get glued up and we're tight. And now we just take the glass and I can put the front in. I can put the back in. I can take my um, gloss Mod Podge and glue these into place. So I haven't even really um, done any work with this glass whatsoever but look at that so far and now we'll take the hood and it put it on the front and smash everything look that moved i couldn't believe how easy this was to get together with the body together so now look up there we got we got the hood, we got the glass, we got the body interior, everything gone. All I need to do is get off my lazy butt and paint this thing. <laughs> I mean, a coat of primer or just what I want to do is I want to get this back to black because I want this over black because that's the color I'm looking for. And I talked to the wife and I was like, you know, my 73 Firebird, when I was doing body work on it, uh, I got to the point to where I couldn't see any more door dings, dents, or anything like that. I, I, it was all filled and smooth. I sprayed it with water multiple times. I had primer on it, and it just, you know, you put water on it, and you look for those little dimples or things, and I couldn't see any. So for ninety nine ninety five, I took it to Earl Scheib, and he shot it with what they called metallic blue. And I am not kidding that it looks just like Earl Scheib metallic blue. My Firebird looked exactly like that. So now I got to get a Firebird kit. But that'll be way down the line because I got a bunch of stuff to build first. But look at, I mean, I was able to get this thing to go together with ease. And that was just from a little flexing here and there, a little tiny bit of heat. And when I say a little tiny bit, I took it over the sink and I ran a bunch of hot water. Now my hot water is pretty hot, but I got it warm right here. And I just pulled it this way, kind of just bending it over this way a little bit. And that pulled this line up really nice to where everything just fell on like you saw. So it can be done. And that's the way we're going to shoot for it. Uh, I've test fitted it like four times now. And everything went together just like what you saw. So I can't see a problem with it while it's already painted and glued. I might have to touch up some paint where it scrapes going in. But dang it, I'll, I'll take that all day over trying to line the body halves up with the interior in there and not being able to get glue on this seam. Now I'll be able to get glue from the inside on this seam and I won't have to worry about it messing up the paint here. So then all I have to do is run my bare metal foil down the side. Let me get this off the way here. I couldn't believe that was able to drop in. But I'll be able to run my bare metal foil down the side here and then remember these go on. That's the wrong one. Every time I grab these, 
I grabbed the wrong one. But these will go on. Jeez. Like this. That'll hide this section of seam all the way back. And just a little snag of bare metal foil up here will cover that up. That ties into this little groove here and come down and we're good to go. So these are going to get painted Tamiya's chrome silver because they weren't real bright chrome. But then this piece here across the top, I will bare metal foil because that is uh, real bright chrome. And we'll go from there. I've had a bunch of really nice people sending me cool links to videos for this car. And it's amazing. The history of this car is so cool. Um, this car was the most expensive Cadillac uh, of the 50s on purpose because it was supposed to beat the Lincoln. <laughs> there wasn't anything going to beat the Caddy is what it was. Um, every option available to all the other Cadillacs was standard in this kit or this kit, this model, um, except maybe air conditioning. I'm not sure, but everything else was. So this thing was a bad to the bone car and they didn't make too many of them because they were just so stinking expensive. But enough of that. The body is awesome. This kit's gonna get done. Uh, we're gonna win it. Uh, I was thinking about doing all kinds of extra stuff with it, but I'm going box stock for the first time in a long time. I might just go overboard a little bit and do um, brake lines underneath just because that's kind of boring. So if I run the brake lines and fuel lines, uh, I know it's not box stock anymore. I'm going to fall right out. But it'll give a little bit more interest. The carpet in here, um, I'm going to do... Well, let me talk about paint real quick. I am going to do the outer body with the uh, Tamiya's X4 and X11 one-to-one -one mix. The interior... I'm going to do Tamiya's Sky Blue X14. And I think the two are going to look so stinking good together. You know, this this will be nice. I'll have the metallic here, and I'll have the non-metallic, and, and that'll make it look really good. And I'm even going to do the floor, the non-metallic. We'll do the sides. I'll chrome them out and everything. But I think we're going to win this one. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Ellis was telling me, hey, dude, if it gets to you, chuck it. And I, I told him last night uh, in the comments that I've fallen in love with this car. I really have. It, it's such an oddity that I just can't wait to get it all finished. I've been biting at the, chomping at the bit to get started on it anyhow. But enough of that. Let's move forward. Uh, number three... Uh, is the people. We have a lot of a lot of body work had to be done on the bodies. So we've we've filed down the sides and everything and I used a bunch of my different my round files and stuff like that to go over the seams this way and this way to just make it to where that seam disappears. The hair right up on top it went right across so by the time you got the seam done it was destroyed. <coughs> so what I just did is I took my X-Acto knife and the back side of it and I went back here and I dug the hair back into his head. So he's ready for paint. She's ready for paint. I did the same thing with that seam here. Come down her arm, across the, the other arm. Inside was tough because there was a lot to do inside there. Uh, just real, real close quarter stuff. And then you see down the side of her dress, this side was a lot worse. I had to sand off a lot more. So I used that file again, the round file, to come way over in here and redo some seams and some wrinkles in there so that she shows up, you know, so it looks good. Now I just got to figure out what color to paint her dress because her dress and his cummerbund are going to be the same color. 
and his tile matches Cumberbund too, and a little boutonniere. Uh, we'll do close to the Cumberbund, but I'll add just a little tiny bit of white to offset it. Um, but these guys are going to be styling. They really are. But enough about them. Let's move on. The front bumper took me a little while. I still have to do the end caps, the, the rubber black. When I get my rubber black, it should be here tomorrow. Um, the grill, if you look, it is awesome now. I am so happy with the way that looks. And what all it is, is my ever so popular Tamiya panel liner black and I shook it up real good and then I put you know every single one of them got a drop of panel liner in there I didn't just run it across the top because I was trying to keep the chrome uh, the same I didn't want to dull the chrome out on the lines so I filled each one of them up let it dry for two days because I, I had to cut the grass <laughs> and then I came back and I did it again and that darkened it up because it was it was still way too light and i didn't want to use my accent color on this and the reason is is because when i put that on it is black and i didn't want it to be that that black black i wanted it to be kind of to where you you think oh, maybe that's the radiator back behind there and a little bit of metallic look to it so that's why I stuck with this, because the other just goes flat. And I'll, I'll use that on the bottom, underneath the body here, in between all this. And then what I'll do is I'll get this all put together, and I'll spray the body, you know, well, I'm not put together because i got to hold it from the inside, but I'll spray the, oh, I could. Jeez, light just went on. The interior doesn't need to be in here. So I can hold this upside down and spray this while it's already glued together and that'll take care of that seam to where it will be gonzo. <laughs> How about that? Talk about a wake up. The little light went on. So yeah, I'll be able to paint this and what I'll do is I'll let some of that overspray go underneath because I was told that when they painted them, this was already assembled. So I'll have the overspray line on here. And with that new gallery airbrush, I should be able to, with a 0.3, be able to come in and do kind of an angle like this and let the overspray drive in and uh, make that look really good. So oh, now I'm even more excited. Well, there's the front bumper. We'll move it out the way. And I got my rims done. I told you last time I panel lined all the way around and I, I only did one thing with the panel liner one application of it because I didn't want those to be black they just looked like they were a dollar aluminum darker look in the uh, videos that I saw and then I showed you that I did the, the clear red in the centers and I let that dry for again two days because I had to cut the grass and then I took my uh, gold gel pen and I went around the little Cadillac emblems and it uh, kind of pushed quite a bit. But with that clear and the uh, whatever the, the, the uh, ink is for the, the gold, I was able to take my uh, toothpick and rub along and wipe away everything that went extra. Now, I still have a little tiny bit of touching up that I'll do today with it. But all in all, man, those rims came out really nice. And again, this is 1957's uh, molding that I'm working with. And it's just fantastic. So there is the rims, the bumpers, the body, the interior, the people, <laughs> and all that. And now I promised that I would show you the back bumpers remember I painted the clear red on the back this is supposed to be red halfway up but they didn't mold it in there 
All they did was mold the little fish eye, so I'm just gonna leave it this way because it does fit pretty good on the body. Um, I did do an extra uh, panel liner, the black panel liner in the center here the other day because I wanted you to see it when I, uh, when I did the uh, number two update here. And then I painted this with the flat white and I told you on my on my one build, I found that the best way to make these things look like that that clear white plastic is with some of the black Tamiya's panel liner. So I said the other day that I was going to do this on film, and this will be the last uh, last thing I do with this update. So my visor is down. And all I did is hit it like that. And then I come back with this. Look at how quick. <laughs> and I, I only did the one because I wanted to show you the difference. Now you tell me that doesn't look exactly like the uh, clear white plastic lenses for the uh, backup lenses. And just that quick. So if you don't have Tamiya panel liner and you were thinking about getting it, I would get it just because of that. Just that alone is 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 worth it. So let's do this one more time since I have one more. And if I don't do it right now, I will forget. I'm going to use a brand new Q-tip too. Put the dot on the top. Ring it around. Get rid of that, grab a new Q-tip, straight down and out. Don't twist it, don't do anything. Just straight in and straight out, and then boom, you win. Let that dry. If it dries a little to your flatness, take a little, little teeny tiny bit of, of quick shine and dab it on top of it and let it draw, you know, run around it. Let that dry. Don't try to brush it. Just dab it on there. But there you go. We are winning the El Dorado. One question I want to ask before I let everybody go is, should I try to figure out how to put horns on the front of the El Dorado? Let me know in the comment what you all think. And we will we'll do what the consensus says on that. But anyhow, there's build update number two at a 57 El Dorado. Broom. I'm Mark, and I want you all to have a great weekend and a better week. Thank you very much for watching.